Hello everybody and welcome to episode 4 in my Frostbunk campaign let's play for the A New Home scenario on hard difficulty. Now we left off in the last episode in a little bit of a precarious position. We had just ventured out into the Frostland to find some of our lost expedition, ballooning our size up to 182 survivors in our colony with more on the way. But we did manage to take care of them all. I mean, we housed them all, we put a roof over everyone's head, the generator never turned off, we fed everybody, and we actually processed quite a lot of sick people. I don't know if that's the right thing to say, you know, process them. That's just the word that always comes to mind. But we did. We processed sick people. They came in, they went, they got healed, they're all good now. However, at the end of the episode, just before, just after midnight recently, a bunch of people just got sick very suddenly. Now we have 25 in the sick bays and 26 not being treated. It's a huge problem. And I've been trying to figure out why people keep getting sick each night and to such an extreme degree. Because I've been very careful to try and make sure that all the workplaces are heated. You know, the generator's been on overdrive a few times and we're getting the next technology to extend its range. The worst offense is that some places are cold right now, but we're, we're gonna fix that. And cold is only moderate chance of getting sick, not to this extreme where a quarter of our population or more are just suddenly sick. So I had to look around, I did some reading, and I think I've gotten to the bottom of it, it seems. It seems like our hunters are the ones that are getting sick. These are the hunters' huts out here. Now hunters seem, from observation anyway, they seem to leave in different areas. They sometimes exit here, they exit over here, and they exit over here. I don't know what the conditions for that are, and maybe it's just taking a road as close as they can out, I'm not too sure. But generally, what seems to be the cause for their sickness is not to do with the fact that their their places aren't are a little bit chilly, or that they venture out into the frostland which is cold. It seems to be the travel distance between, you know, the city center or wherever they are to, you know, their homes, to then going to the hunter's huts or going to the exit off off map. That distance, that travel time along the roads, you know, that's probably an hour of travel time that they have getting to and from work where they're at negative 40 degrees and they end up getting sick. So if you were to, I guess, plot down, you know, steam hubs and heaters all along the routes out of the city, then in theory, they wouldn't get sick to and from going to work. But I cannot manage to do that because it seems to be, like I said, three different areas where they leave. And I'm not sure what causes that. You know, I actually did a test where I removed this road just to see, but they still left that way. So it doesn't seem to be based on the fact that there's a road going out there. They just take the road as close as they can, but then they leave here, this little patch of snow you can see. So there's not much I can do about it. I think I will start to put down heaters on these exit points wherever I can. It looks like over here might be a good place for one. And then we can also, you know, get into kind of a, an adjacency effect here for when we eventually have a coal mine up and running. Maybe something like over here, if we have it up and running, maybe they'll leave around here for the iron mines. There's a decent amount of stuff to gather here, so, you know, a steam hub here would make sense. So, at different points, we could probably start laying down some steam hubs to make sure that on their way out, they have a, a less of a chance of getting cold. Um, that seems to be what's happening anyway. You know, if you have ideas, let me know in the comments. But that seems to be, from my reading, what's going on. So, what we're going to do in the immediacy, in the... In the interim to deal with the sick people that we have and the more that inevitably are going to arrive probably some of them are going to be sick we're going to build a couple medical bays here and then we're probably going to invest in hot houses so that future food production is coming from the city itself rather than going out and hunting all the time because that just seems to be it seems to be crazy you know we have almost like i said a quarter of our population just sick right now that's really not good so we need to fix that um so that's what we're going to do so let's get building so two medical posts, one here and one here. This is an extreme amount. You know, we already have five. Now we're going for seven, but we have the engineer's capacity to do it. We've got more engineers arriving, so I don't see why not. I'm not gonna be using them on more tech, not for a while. I don't think it's right to get more tech, unless maybe we get one more building. Each tech building from now on is only gonna give us a 10% increase to tech. So it's a very minimal increase for, you know, five engineers to be working it. Uh, so we'll build those two out. They should stay warm next to the steam hub. That should be all good. And we'll try to get our discontent a little bit lowered as well. Um, although it's actually not too bad. It used to be a lot higher. I guess that's, it's not too bad at all. Uh, what else do we need to do? I think that's pretty much it. We'll just let time play and I'll address concerns as we have them. But that's kind of the immediate thing I want to do. Uh, I've, oh yeah, actually no. I've noticed that coal is kind of getting low. And we have a bunch of free space for extra workers. So what I'm going to do is build another 
gathering post. Ah, I can't. Okay, then what we'll do is wait for this gathering post to be done, which won't be too long. There's 180, 105 coal left here. And once that's done, we'll decommission this, build a new one over here, because uh, these two deposits will like kind of be removed. Build another one over here with the scrap steel that we get back from this. And that way we don't have to heat this building anymore. The steam hub will heat them for us. So we'll save some coal in the long run there as well. All right, let's let time play. I think that's pretty much the main focus and concern right now. I was looking at the Book of Laws where I was thinking about getting um, child shelters. I'll probably end up doing that at some point, but not, not immediately. We don't have the steel really to do it. So after we get this generator range upgrade from the technology building, then we'll be able to heat the outer ring, the second ring of our kind of generator or yeah, building around our generator. And then we'll be able to get the steelworks technology so we can actually start producing our own steel, uh, I think pretty much infinitely when we build it here on the iron ore. All right, I've let time play. So we're off. Oh, we need to start cooking our food. We've got 64 raw food, so we'll put some people on that. Uh, hopefully they will... Are they on the way? They're going to build right now. Hmm. I guess they've prioritized building instead of cooking. I'm not too sure why that's the case. Maybe engineers would do it instead. In treatment, in treatment, going to build. Oh, that's not good. Well, we'll just put them on that anyway and see if they do it. I mean, building the medical base is more important than feeding right now because we only have 10 hungry. We didn't actually have any hungry starting off, so no one's like really going to be starving. We've got 64 raw food just sitting there, so that should be fine. So I'll speed it up. We'll just keep it on game speed 2. And by the way, we're about to arrive with 238 wood, so we just do not need to work these two sawmills at all. The coal thumper is thumping away, and people are gathering from it. From it via the gathering post. I just, just realized as well, you can actually assign people directly to the coal pile itself to gather. I don't think I'll do that until we hit the next temperature raise, which is uh, in about a day. Then maybe we'll just quickly assign people here. This can definitely support two gathering posts, it seems. So we're going to try and get them all on that. The generator is on overdrive, by the way, right now. So we're giving an extra boost to the initial houses around us, making them livable. Um, if we go up to generator level 2, then all of this will be livable as well. But luckily, with the temperature rise, everything will be pretty much livable for about a day. About a day or two, and then the temperature is going to drop straight back down. Alright, a coal pile has just been depleted. I'm assuming it's up here. Yeah. So we just have the one left now. 46 coal left on that. Some people are getting hungry. Alright, generator range upgrade. Now has The zone is now going to extend further. Yeah, boom. Just like that, and everyone's now pretty toasty although that's six coal per hour and then 12 coal per hour so it is heavy on the coal you know going out another another range like that but luckily the overdrive will keep them toasty for a while i'll leave that until we get this temperature rise and then we'll we'll turn off the range i think for a bit um all right let's choose our next technology like i said i think we're going to go with the steelworks 25 wood and four hours until our group arrives back home. So keep it on speed two. Oh, it looks like our medical bay is done. So we'll put people on that. Uh, we don't have that many engineers left, actually. I think I have engineers out here. So we'll take them off that. They don't need to be there. Yeah. And we should start. Now we have up to 30 in care. We could have up to 35 in care at once. Now, we had a look last time. It doesn't seem like it's going to take that long to process quite a few of these people. One hour, three hours, three hours, four hours, six hours. So about a day. And I think most people are going to be processed, as I keep saying. And then um, there's another technology we could get here for medical post upgrades, where people get healed 10% faster. So that might be worth doing as well, I think. And luckily, we're on top of food and we got more food coming in. So we could almost turn off one of the hunting huts just for one night to help ease the stress on our medical base for one of the nights and people getting sick might be worth doing yeah i'm just thinking is it worth doing tonight uh, maybe not the temperature's gonna rise so maybe it'll be okay all right the coal pile is depleted so let's decommission this building dismantle we'll get back four steel we don't have any steel production right now there is some steel out here we could still grab 60 and then we have these guys coming back with 87 but dismantling that once that gets dismantled now and then maybe we'll dismantle the road as well which might stop the people traveling off that way. I don't know if it will, but it might. Um, then we'll build another gathering post out here. So we just have to wait for that to be done. So we'll speed it up again. I'll just keep it on speed too. It does automatically bump the speed down every now and then. So that's why I always have to keep checking on it and doing it again. Scouts have returned safely to the city. So another like 40 or so people. 
um, basically 50 people actually, and then 87 steel, 3 steam cores, like I said, we can use one of those in a hothouse, and steam cores can be used for certain buildings like that, or they can be used for automatons, uh, that can kind of, machines that will automate buildings for you. Uh, we got some food and wood, so it looks like our stockpile doesn't actually max out, we can't produce anymore, but it does give us the correct amount of wood, so we have it, we just can't store anymore, so it's good that we didn't hit a cap and lose some, if you know what I mean. Alright, let's go back venturing out. The only place we have to go now is here, to the weather station. So we'll find out what happens out there. Might be worth then getting the technology for another set of scouts, because we do have a lot of people now that have arrived to the city. Um, and in between episodes, I'll name these people as well to, to match the patrons' names. Alright, let's keep it moving. Alright, so all the food has been cooked, so we'll just turn people off that building for now. So there's 150 food rations. 150 food for people today. Which is pretty damn good. And we're processing through the sick people nicely, just about. Although these buildings aren't very efficient, the amount of engineers on them is really low, because a lot of the engineers are actually sick. Which is, uh, interesting. And we got our steel now, so we can easily build the gathering posts again, like I was saying. Slam it down there. And then we might start dismantling that road. Don't think we need it right now. Actually, yeah, we'll dismantle it. Oh, it's instant. That's good. Okay, so when the temperature rises as well, I think we'll build a gathering post out here just to gather the last little bits of stuff here. Um, yeah, I think that would make sense because it, it's prob we're probably never going to get to 30 degrees again. So <laughs> best make use of it while we can. All right, we're down to just nine sick people right now that aren't being treated, 30 that are. And uh, yeah, people are pretty warm, which is nice. And then this is gonna get done. So coal is pretty low. We've probably only got, yeah, it says 15 hours left. Generator's obviously on overdrive right now, so it's reaching its limits pretty soon. And we can see, look at all the, the hunters are heading out. So some of them, yeah, it's so strange. I just don't get it, where they even come from. It seems like they come out of these buildings and then they travel like all the way out this way. So we could keep an eye on them and see where they go. It looks like they're heading, most of them, yeah. If they don't take this route, that's great. So it does seem like then we get to decide slightly where they go by building roads to the extremities of our city which then makes it a little bit more predictable because we could say like, oh, they're taking a road to the very edge of the map. So a heater out here would sort them out or at least a heater on the journey out here. Because they're about to leave the comforts of, you know, the city and then start heading out and out and out and get cold, uh, really cold, very cold on their way out, I think, which is probably the issue. But this steam hub actually doesn't have coverage. It has coverage of here. It doesn't have coverage of the route. So we need like another one here. That's kind of overlapping then, so yeah, maybe one here, just so it's just touching that route somewhat. We'll have to we'll have to figure it out when we get some more. Actually, we did get the more steel, so we m maybe could think about it soon. We'll just see how it goes tonight, and then figure it out after. Uh, okay, so this person wants me to turn off the generator. Turn off the over overdrive! Yep, that was uh, pretty close to blowing. Sorry. So we'll let that calm down. Uh, 57 hungry people. That's okay. We've got plenty of rations. Hopefully they'll just go and get their food. It's probably a lot of the new people. Uh, only three people not being sick, treated, which is great. I don't know if while they're being treated they can become gravely ill. I don't think so. Which means that as long as we get rid of this number completely, then we're not at risk. At least not too much. And the temperature's just about to go up, so we're gonna have a little bit of a chilly night. A little bit of a chilly night for a lot of people today. But tomorrow, that's going to become livable again, which is good. All right, let's speed it up then. How's our scouts doing? So they're on their way. They have to cross some pretty treacherous terrain, if you think about it. Cross over a cliff, two cliffs, sort of like a ravine, just to get there. All right, so this gathering post is done, so we'll assign people to that. So, yeah, so it's interesting. The coal thumpers actually stop working when uh, when it gets full. Like, they, they pump up all this coal, they wash it to the surface, and then until you gather it, they won't start operating that machine again. So who's heading out? Who's that? I can't click them, actually. Oh, they're just kind of disappearing, like, right here. 
So they're basically already considered to have left, I suppose, which is why we can't select them. Godspeed. Our hunters are doing great work bringing back food. Everyone's been fed. Everything's great. So what are we going to get? Our steelworks is at 60, at 92%. I think after that... I think after that I'm going to go with... Ooh, more scouts or the medical post upgrade. More scouts would be pretty good, I think. And then the medical post upgrade. Tough one. Tough one. I think we'll go medical post and then more scouts. Yeah, I'm going to make that call. Alright, let's speed it up. While everyone's sleeping. So, 9 people sick, 11, 12. Oh my god, so many people sick. So, if we have a look, like, who's sick? Shocking twist. This poor kid is sick. Even though they're just sitting at home. I guess they're just chilly, you know, the little chilies. Getting a little sick. I feel bad for him, man. There's nothing I can do about it. We had the generator on overdrive for as long as we could. So, these people are just staying home and getting sick. Yeah, I guess this chilliness is just causing them to fall ill. Wow, just even on chilly. Well, that's just the way it is, I guess. Hopefully not too much more than 12. Temperature is about to rise if they can just hold out till the morning. And uh, let's have a look really quickly through these places when people... Less than an hour. Okay, yes, yeah, we're getting through some of them here. Getting through a lot of them, actually, which is good. Yeah, we'll get that medical post thing for sure. We just need it. God, we have so many medical posts. It's crazy. Matilda Stapleton says we survived another night. That has to count for something. At least we're alive. Not everyone else is so lucky. Damn right. Uh, yeah, we'll just wait for the steelworks to finish. Then we'll start building out here. Uh, maybe build a new steam hub out that way as well. And the gathering post out here. In fact, we could do the gathering post now. Seeing as the temperature is going to get better anyway. So right around here will be good. Trying to think of the route to get here, you know, what would be the best route. It doesn't really matter when the temperature's going to go up anyway, I suppose. So we'll just do this for now. So they have to go this way and then that way to get there, which is a bit of a walk. But uh, I think it'll be okay. And then when these when these things get, get removed, we'll build a new sawmill up here eventually. We don't need it because we still have wood here to gather. All right. Temperature is rising. I love that steam effect. It's so cool. Ah, feels feels good, man. All right, so we are two hours left before the generator is going to turn off. So let's now turn off the range setting. So we buy ourselves a little bit of extra time, and then in 20 minutes, people will go start working the coal again. Now we've got twice as many people on it, which is good. Uh, we could even just quickly throw some people on this if we wanted to, although the temperature is pretty cold out there, so I won't do that. Whereas it's much warmer in here. I don't think we need the heater on. I think livable is pretty much where you want to keep people at. Comfortable is great, you know, it means they just can't get sick, but I think livable is pretty fair. Alright, the hunters are coming back, so now we're getting this new wave of sick people again. Much we can do about that. See, look, going to rest after hunt, after hunt, after hunt. All these people just got sick. Like, where is Eminstein Canard? He's just coming in. The thumper is operating again. So coal is coal is moving up. Good. Steelworks researched. All right, let's get the next thing, which is the medical post upgrade, and then we'll get building the steelworks here and here. Connect them via a road, and then we'll have to bring this into the city somehow. Just probably like that, I think, is fine. So we get some people building all that stuff. Uh, let's assign some people to do the cooking. Feed some people. Although, no one's really hungry right now, which is good. One day and four hours to go until we reach the next... Until our scouts reach that area. It's a good thing we didn't get more scouts, actually, right now, because they've nowhere to go. We've only got one location for them to travel to. So, I'm sure this will open up a bunch more, but yeah, until then, we didn't really need to do that. Alright, let's just keep speeding it up. Wood is at pretty much max, which is awesome. Steel is pretty good for now. I'm not even going to work these buildings, we're just building it now because now's a good time to do it while we have the uh, temperature on our side, while they're out here building through the snow. It's not too bad for them to... I mean, it is pretty cold, but it could be a lot worse. Oh, sorry guys. Amazon. One second.
Okay, I'm back. Apologies. Sorry, doorbell, Amazon delivery. Um, Alright, so where do we leave off? So we got 15 sick people outside of the sick bays. 35 that are currently being processed, as I say. 50 people not working right now. So yeah, we can start throwing people onto the gathering post out here. Turn up the heaters for them so that they're kind of safe. Uh, these two areas are being built. That's pretty... I, I think we're... I think we're doing all right. We're kind of on top of things, I think. Generator is cooling down from its overdrive, which is good. Just hopefully none of these sick people become gravely ill. That's, you know, my biggest fear. Once you get one gravely ill, that's it. You know, you got to start signing laws, figure out what to do with them. But for now, we're okay. All right, the workday is over. The research is halted. We just about nearly got it as well, 91%. Damn, maybe that extra 10% would have helped us then if we had another uh, research thing built. What's going on here? Cold homes. Captain, some of our people are concerned about the low temperature in their homes. They quite sensibly point out that it's easy to fall ill when it's cold and ask you to address the problem. So you'll have to start heating five of the cold homes within two days, then keep them heated for two days. Let's heat all the homes. Start heating 10 cold homes within 24 hours, then keep them heated for two days. That's a tough one to ask. See, I, I wish I could actually see my... See, the temperature's about to fall in a day, so there's just no way I can do it. This always happens. It's like you're asking me something when I know that it's going to get colder. I can't. I cannot do it. Just have to manage that discontent. All right. Yeah, there's not much for us to do during the night. We're just going to let these things be built. Ah, so we can actually assign people to work the steelworks in the morning. But we have plenty of steel for now, so these buildings just do not need to operate. So I'll actually turn them off for now, just so they don't distract me. I'll do that with this as well, so they don't, they don't look like they have a problem. There we go. And the cookhouse is just fine. All right, cool. Well, we're just going to have to fly through time then tonight. Hopefully process these sick people. There's five, four, three. Three people that are currently sick. There we go. Everyone's now being treated. And the treating num the number of sick is actually falling below 35. 35 is our capacity for sick people. And we're at 33. So that's excellent. It's going down. No doubt during the night, as the hunters, you know, come back, we're going to get more sick people. Yeah, there we go. Well, actually, we're just picking up sick people now in general. And that's probably because a lot of these homes are chilly. So... Well, yeah, we can spare it. Let's let's turn on the, the range setting for now. We're getting a little tight on coal. I think we need more and more people gathering from the uh, the thumper and then maybe build another thumper soon. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do that. We have, the, we have the manpower to do it, so why not? Another gathering post. Let's turn on that heater for while they're building. Can we just turn it on? for while they're building out here. I don't want them getting sick. It's going to be burning a lot of coal, though. Five hours left. Yeah, that's fine. We'll be producing more coal by the time we hit that. Okay. Four sick that aren't being treated. Which is fine. As long as we just have, like, a few people that aren't being treated, that's, like, that's okay as long as they haven't been there that long. So the fact that the number went down completely and then it started going up again, that's that means that these are... This guy's only been sick and not being treated for a few hours. If you go a day without treating someone, that's when they become gravely ill, you know? Or if their conditions just worsen. So for now, it could be worse. <laughs> Gotta look on the bright side and be like, look, you've only been not treated for a few hours, you know, deal with it. And who do we have, actually? I haven't been checking the names too much. Simon, Margaret, and Maud. No one I recognize. We have Shocking Twist, Bob. It's easy to recognize the kids, but I can I can barely recognize Dan Suso. There he is. Etienne Stahlin. Actually, I do recognize quite a few of these as patrons. Jack Absolute. Nerdington, of course. Vin Lord. Yeah, I recognize some names there. Uh, okay, four hours to go. Seven hours before we reach our destination with our scouts again. So nothing too crazy. We're on day 14, by the way, so we just hit two weeks. And we've got 40 people not doing anything. Which isn't actually bad, considering we've so many in treatment. The unassigned jobs are basically the people that are being treated. Which is uh, ex essentially how it's working out. Which means that, you know... Our buildings are working at 100% efficiency for those who are working them, most of them. All right, let's speed it up. Work time. Let's get gathering that coal, really start picking it up. 
So coal should now really start like flying up, I would imagine. Because there's four, 500 coal in this pile. And we're just going to be like, come on now, everybody get on top of that. And I'll go just put this on the work shift again. Medical post has been researched. The upgrade, so 10% faster at processing these sick people. So that's great. So we could go hothouse for the food. Or we can go more scouts. I'm going to go more scouts because I think it'd be good to bundle up another scout quickly and send them off. After that, straight after that, hothouse. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Because food is... We're handling food quite well, actually, right now. It seems. And then soon we might think about getting bunkhouses. Because when this drops to 40, we could build bunkhouses out here. And that costs steel. But once our steel production is up, start building up these bunkhouses. And then they're, they're insulated another layer. And we could turn off the range setting of the generator saving ourselves a bunch of coal. Now, if the temperature drops again, which it doesn't look like it's going to drop again for another few days after day 15, we should be okay then to turn off that range setting. But then, obviously, if the temperature drops, then even the bunkhouses are going to need that extra heat again. All right, everyone's been treated, which is good. Let's check on Dean Palmer is in here. Another uh, trusted patron. John Noel, John, Jane Ratcliffe, Emmins Decanard. All right, is that number starting to fall? Wow, so three gathering posts for one thumper? That's insane that it's still producing more than we can gather. Fucking hell. I mean, I guess it's these aren't full capacity right now. They're, some people are sick. There's three sick absences there and two sick absences at the other one. So fair enough, but man. And what about out here? So we're gathering coal out here, 10 per hour. There's only 12 left and then 52 steel. So steel's going up and so is coal just based on this area. And then we got all these people coming back in. Raphael Senecal. William Potter. These are patrons. Oscar Thorborn. These are all patrons. Appreciate them all. Gathering the food. Supplying the colony. One hour to go until our scouts reach the next destination, which is the weather station. A tall building with some peculiar devices on the roof. It's most likely a weather station set up by scientists from Winterhome. Remember, we are on the hunt for Winterhome. We're trying to find it. We found the bridge to Winterhome, which is where we got the automaton and where we decommissioned it to get two steam cores. Uh, coal pile depleted. Okay, yeah, that's expected. And then steel steel will probably last another couple days, actually, before we deplete it completely. So let's check our burn rate of coal now. So yeah, we've been pretty tight with it now since... Since things have been getting colder, we have that second ring of houses that we have to heat with all the steam hubs and stuff like that. So steam hubs are negative 102 per day. The generator itself is negative 288. And then extra heaters in homes, and thing, or not in homes, but in workplaces, is 112. So, yeah, let's have a look at where we're heating. See, so this is a bit overkill. Let's turn those off. Keep them on livable, I think. Wow, so that was actually a complete waste. Those are being heated even though their base insulation was already comfortable, like at the moment, already high enough so that they were comfortable. This is the one that would need it, if anything, the further out one. So we'll save ourselves some coal there. That was a bit of an inefficiency on my part, I think. As I'm sure there's probably lots. All right, there's nobody in the weather station, but everything still seems to be operational. We could try to find out what the scientists from Winterhome were working on. Grim forecast. We found scientists' notes. They predict that the great cold is going to get much worse. What's more troubling is that the observations ended abruptly months ago. There's also not a can of spam, not even a crumb of bread left in the pantry. It's obvious they moved out for good. We can see the city of Winterhome from the roof of the, of the weather station. So we discovered a coal mine and Winterhome. So we got some coal and then a steam core. Steam core is pretty good. So we could head on to Winterhome so we can see it or go to a coal mine. Hmm. We'll, we'll go to Winterhome first. 15 hours to arrive. What's this? 13. Yeah, we'll go to Winterhome. Let's keep going. And what is this? Abandoned station. The search for other cities. The recent report from the weather station has got people talking. They're frightened that such an important facility was apparently abandoned. Some are starting to wonder whether the evacuation from London was even a good idea. A few are lamenting openly. I knew we shouldn't have come. At least London had real houses, not tents and wooden shacks. We'll have answers soon enough. Hope is going to fall slightly. 
Yikes. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> Don't know what to tell you. I mean, I kind of agree in a way. Although London, I, I mean, I'm guessing London was colder than negative 30 degrees, but it's hard to argue against properly insulated buildings. But if it was just too cold, then fair enough. In the loading screens into the game, it did say something about, it had a bit of the lore, something about like how London was getting really, really cold and going north was just warmer. So that's why they went north. And then the British Empire apparently built these generators uh, because London was just falling to chaos. And these are like last bastions to kind of for people to retreat to or something, something like that. I'll have to look up in between episodes maybe so I can give you the proper lore. But it was, it was something like that. And it was just a little loading screen kind of tooltip thing I told you about. But maybe we'll find out when we get to Winterhome. Maybe it tells us there. I actually can't remember, so we'll see. Uh, anything else to do? Am I forgetting anything? We've got 30 people not doing anything. The steelworks are offline right now, but I'm ha I'm okay with that. We, oh yeah, you know what? We need a steam hub out that way. I'm not going to turn it on. But we do need one out here just to heat this place. And eventually we'll work those buildings and turn on the steam hubs when we need it. Wood is really good right now. Food is all done, so we'll just take those guys off that building for now. Medical posts are getting through people. We're maxed out, but there's no there's no overflow, which is good. Okay. Let's check um I wanna check the food. So food processing. Not sure what that means. I go history, that's really what I want to see. So food consumption is in that's our estimation of food consumption, I guess, the last ten days. And our raw food gain. And the green is the food rations gain. So we've been staying on top of it. That was obviously when we got probably an extra amount delivered, I'm guessing. The raw food gain has actually gone up slightly. Because less sick people have been going out to hunt. And then we'll have to see how much food rations. We had less food ration production than, than consumption that day before. Uh, so we'll see. All right, more scouts has been researched, so we'll actually send off another group now in a sec. There we go. More scouts researched. Uh, so we can deploy an additional scout. Whoops, I didn't get to quite read that. I'm sure it just said we can deploy additional scouts. Uh, 40 wood and just five workers. So we can easily do that. But I'm going to wait because I know, and I know it's a little bit gamey to be saying this, but I know that things open up out this way. So I want to have a scouting party go this way and have one go that way. Now, maybe we could have three scouting parties. So we do seem to have a lot of people. But for now, I'm not going to make the next group until we get to Winterhome, at least. Because I think Winterhome will reveal stuff out here, or, or if not, maybe out here. But at some point, I don't know what causes it. I actually thought, like, one of these would do it. I thought it just opens up kind of linearly. But there's definitely stuff out here. So you want to send them in opposite directions because this guy can hit that and then go there. You know, you don't want to send two people just next to each other. I don't think that'd be efficient. Maybe it would be, but I don't know. All right, the next thing to get, we could get the generator power upgrade. So it's just like straight up more heating. We can we can turn up, raise the heat level if we want. Obviously, it costs more coal to do that, though. Um, we could do coal mining, charcoal drill, wall drill. So these are all wood or these these two are wood and these two are coal. A charcoal kiln is turning wood into coal, though, so I don't think we want to do that. Um, coal mining would be good, but I believe that takes a steam core when you build it. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Charcoal kiln uses intense heat to char up to 70 wood per standard workday, producing 170 coal. Now, I don't know if it takes wood from your stockpile or if it has to be built near those kind of fallen trees. And then wall drills, you drill into the ice to find, you know, trees in there, essentially. Faster gathering, that would kind of make sense for the coal piles that we're producing. Oh no, the hothouse, of course, how could I forget? Obviously going with the hothouse to prevent sending people out to getting sick every night. And then we're going to get the bunkhouse to upgrade our homes. Okay, hothouse it is. I think we'll build a hothouse here, unless we decide to put down another steam hub somewhere within the city. Or maybe like here or something, so that people, when they're traveling in and out, that might make sense. Actually, another one right here, so that a hot house could go right here. Hot houses are pretty big buildings. All right, more scouts. Yeah, okay. We have the more scouts thing. Feels like a waste not sending them off right now. 
But until we have a new location, I don't think we should. Uh, okay, the temperature is about to drop soon. What's our temperature gauge at now? Look at that. Everyone's loving it. <laughs> They're loving life. All right, we could turn this off then. Who built that? John Fulmer, Bartholomew Montagu, and Patrick Borchier. And a few others, actually. Matilda Stapleton. Six people are hungry, 30 people are sick, 28 people are sick, awesome. I love seeing the fact that we're treating those guys, staying on top of things. I cannot believe that no one has died yet. It's incredible. All right, 7 p.m. Nine hours to get to winter home. Very eager to see what's gonna happen there. And uh, people are going out for their hunt. See, look, they leave in all different directions. How am I supposed to take care of all that? You know, how am I supposed to take care of that? Stop going off through the snow. Oh uh, yeah, see? It's like there's just designated spots on the map that they're like, yeah, we're heading off this way and this way and this way. And that's just the way they go, road or not. It doesn't matter. We're just going to carve through the snow and head out. Because, yeah, I don't know. It seems almost random because they seem to go different places. Like, often they'll go past the graveyard, but this time none of them seem to go that way. Strange. A little bit weird. I don't know. Because presumably they're leaving the crater. I don't I don't think they're just hunting within this area. Some people were saying like they're they're like fishing through the ice and stuff like that. I don't know where they'd be doing that though. But yeah, I don't know. It seems like it's a solid ice wall because you can drill through it. So I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's just le let time keep going. It's almost 2 a.m. 28 people are hungry. That's all right. 22 people are sick. It's almost like a record low for a very long time. But I'm sure this place is going to fill up with sick people in the morning. And how's the um, the food production? So we get 18 per hunt. So every night we're getting 2, 4, 6, 8. So we're getting 80 uh, minus 6. No, minus 8. So 80, uh, 72. So 72 food per night. And then with a hot house, we'll be getting 30 per day. That's going to be a lot. Easily be f feeding everybody then. Enough so that we can actually start reducing numbers here, I would imagine, until we start maybe getting more people in. And if we send off more scouts, we don't have to feed them. <laughs> so they feed themselves when they head off. So that's even even better. Taking the load off these places is good. Although, who knows? We might find a bunch of people at Winter Home and have to bring them back. We'll see. Down to 21 now. This is awesome. This is great. These are the sick people. Find your name if you're, in the, if you're a patron. Scouts have arrived at Winter Home. Here we go, boys. Uh, and girls. We climbed up to the edge of the city. We stood there speechless, staring at the scene of devastation. It's a city of the dead. Most of the buildings are destroyed and the generator has exploded. Oh my god. The fall of winter home. The streets of the ruined city are littered with scores of dead bodies. The City Chronicle describes the shortage of food and citizens increasing in despair. The following, squab uh, the following squabbles, riots, and descent into anarchy, fights for dwindling resources, and the eventual starvation. The last entry, God forgive us, we're eating our dead. There's no hope. Sites discovered freshwater springs and American camp. Well, fuck me, that place went down. So, the alright, we got two steam cores here, though. So I guess they blew their generator, or... Yeah, from desperation, just trying to stay warm, maybe? dark so what have we found freshwater springs and coal mine i thought it said something oh yeah oh yeah there we go american camp sweet so we must have found the map the details on that place outpost what is this outpost building an outpost depot allows you to assign people to work as, as an outpost team oh yeah i totally forgot about this Send an outpost team to establish an outpost in Frostland at a location rich in resources. The outpost will send these resources to the city once per day until you order the team to return to the city. Oh my god, I for totally forgot about that. So that is so cool. So Winterhome is an outpost where it'll actually generate resources for us. We can create a team, send them there, and they'll just ferry back resources every day, uh, making that journey to and from. We should totally do that. An outpost can be set up here, delivering an estimated 150 wood every one day, zero hours. So that means we just never need to put people on, like, the sawmills. 150 wood. For now. 
So can we do that here? Scouts, I don't know when we can make an outpost though. Is it a technology or sorry? Uh, yeah, technology. Let's see. Exploration and industry, an outpost depot. So that's what we need to be able to do that. So we can't do that for a while, it seems. But fair enough, that's really good for the future. I totally forgot about that. All right, so um, our guys have three steam cores on them. We'll send them to Freshwater Springs. Which is, we can see distant glimmers of sun reflected on the surface of water. Unfrozen water here points to the presence of freshwater springs. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm scared, though. You know, I feel like some of these places can go probably go wrong. Whether or not we go to the freshwater springs and then back, or maybe hit there, hit the coal mine, and then come back. That might be the right thing to do. And we'll have our next scouting party go to the American camp. Yeah. All right, let's go to freshwater springs. I would be devastated if we lost three steam cores devastated I think maybe the one of the worst defenders was that bear attack that we managed to survive you can definitely die with that so I'm, I'm glad we didn't um, okay so let's go back to the city home let's prepare our next expedition 40 wood 5 manpower or 5 workers uh, so scouting party 2 let's go to the American camp one day in 3 hours wow it seems closer than that but maybe it's rough terrain so the American camp, so what's going on there? Several big tents, no signs of life. A flag flies over them, the American flag. Even from this distance, we couldn't mistake the stars and stripes. Maybe we'll go to war with them. Because <laughs> um, we're British. What else now? Okay, I think we're good. Seems to be some... We are alone. The news has shocked everyone in the city. There are supposed to be many settlements and construction crews here. People living normal lives in homes heated by generators, but we're alone. Hope falls. Oh man. How are we supposed to survive if they didn't? This place is a deadly trap. We need to get out of here. We should have never left Britain. We must save ourselves and our tris children. We must go back. Oh my days, look at the hope. Winter home has fallen. They're all dead. How will we survive here without any help? We have to go back to London. There's no hope here for us in this frozen desert. People start to gather as the news of the fate of winter home spreads through the city. Some of them want to drop everything and flee to London. Panic is starting to set in. I must give them purpose. Oh man. So, choose our path. People are shaken, racked by fear and doubt. They've lost hope in our chances of survival. Desperation could quickly push them to commit reckless acts, which if we remember is what happened to Winterholm. You have to unite them behind a vision of the future. Decide, how, decide now what will give them purpose and restore hope or else the city will descend into chaos that consumed Winterholm. A new set of laws will become available for either order or faith. So we're gonna go either religious route or kind of a more authoritarian route. Um, I'm gonna go authoritarian, pretty much, pretty straight up. I actually cannot remember what one, if, if one is better or worse than the other. I think they're basically just different uh, with their own different set of events. So I'm gonna go order and discipline. That's what I would do. I wouldn't be like, you need to pray to false gods to lift your spirits. Although maybe that's the right thing for the masses. But I would be like, no, heavy handed. We need to work hard get our resources, take care of our people, and calm the fuck down, <laughs> all right? Order and discipline. So purpose. So the first thing you can enact is the neighborhood watch. We need to mobilize and stand together to help people in need and protect them from troublemakers. A new building, the watchtower. Watchtowers increase hope of people living nearby. You'll have to build two watchtowers. Uh, I'm not gonna sign it just yet until we feel like we need to. Danny Suso says, United we survive. Only order can give us stability. Ben Travis says, Anarchy, not the cold, was the downfall of Winterhome. You're damn right, Ben Travis. Very insightful. They didn't necessarily freeze to death. They tore themselves apart. So let's all be reasonable. Be reasonable. You're on every wall with a knife at my back. That's what Caesar said about Brutus in uh, Rome HBO TV show when he sends him off to Greece, when he wants to send him to Greece. And then Brutus says, only tyrants need fear tyrant killers. And you are no tyrant. <laughs> Sorry, I like the show. Uh, okay, so yeah, we got a problem in the streets. Let's have a look at them. 
using that Ancel technology. Look at these guys. Look at this guy in particular. He's the guy trying to ring the bell for order! Order! He's like the speaker in the House of Commons. Order! And that's what we're going to be trying to do. Keep these people, give them purpose, keep order. Now, hope is a disaster. <laughs> uh, one bad move and we lose. So we'll have to sign one of those laws soon. I was thinking actually signing the law for the child shelters. Because that's what we talked about last time. And that way, if we build a child shelter, I think hope rises quite significantly uh, for taking care of the children. It's like, look, a new regime, give the people faith, the children will be taken care of, you know? And then everyone's like, oh, my child is now in this shelter. Isn't that great? How many children do we have, actually? 26? How many people can fit in a child shelter? Probably not enough. Provides for 15 children, so we'd need two if we want to take care of everybody. Hmm. All right, well, let's just keep letting time play. We'll, we'll address concerns as we come to them. August Wake says, there's no future here. We have to go back to London. Damn. Dean Palmer says, we have to get organized. We have to do something. Fidelia Darrington says, we aren't going to make it in this hole. I didn't see what she said after that. <laughs> I looked away. We have to something. Survive, escape, leave. Probably go home, I imagine. All right, let me take an assessment of the situation as it currently stands. That's all happening at 5 a.m. Can you imagine? News of winter home. You know, it's all dark outside. The bells are ringing. The chatter is outside your tents. People come out and they're like, winter home's gone. We have to go back to London. It's like, oh, God. What a terrible state of affairs. The temperature just about to plummet another 10 degrees. People are pretty livable right now, but coal is, uh, coal is getting a little thin, a little thin on the ground. Is that building being heated? No. How much coal do we have? We still have loads in this one thumper, though. The thumper is doing just fine, and we're getting the hothouse. Okay, well, let's just let time play. See what happens. 17 people sick, not too bad. 17 people being cared for. So half, more than half of our, uh, medical bays are open. Which is excellent. Love to see it. And our scouts, two scouting parties are heading off in opposite directions now. Hopefully party number one will be okay. What's this? Oh, Jesus. The Londoners. The unconvinced want to leave. Sir, you've convinced the majority, but hope is low. A group of our people are still so scared that they want to flee the city for London in 15 days. They've come to try and change your mind. You say order will save us. Nonsense. What? Are we going to orderly decide what to eat first when we start to starve? If we don't try to reach London, we'll end up like Winterhome. And then I'm like, calm down, we're not gonna die. <laughs> Great response. The Londoners. Your people are divided. Some of them are so scared that they plan to leave the city for London in 15 days. They'll try to convince others to join them, preying on their discontent. Fear may lead people to desperate acts. Maintain peace, give people hope, and manage their discontent to guide the city safely through the looming social crisis. Our new objective, the Londoners. There's 19 of them right now. The number of people that want to leave. So in, f what is it? How do it's in 14 days, they're going to leave. 19 people. And it's trending upwards. Many people may join the Londoners. So we need to just, I wonder what does it show me actually who those people are. It'd be cool if we could see the list of names. Um, don't let the Londoners disrupt the city. 19 remaining. Damn it. Doorbell again. Sorry, guys. All right, I'm back. Sorry for the numerous disruptions this episode. I don't like them as much as you guys probably. It takes me out of my immersion. All right, so we were looking at the Londoners, yeah? 19 of them are planning to leave the city, and it's trending upwards. So more people are going to join the Londoners because I think hope is so low. So I think if discontent is high and hope is low, more people are going to trend towards joining the Londoners. Uh, so we really need to fix this hope as quick as we can uh, to lower the amount of people that want to join them and eventually get it trending towards people are not joining the Londoners. They don't agree with them, right? Because things are so good here. Uh, so yeah, we have to sign a law. Now, I, we can only sign one law every like 18 hours or something. I think the first one we're going to do is the child shelters. We could try the purpose immediately and get the neighborhood watch going, but those are people that actually we need to work a little bit. So I'm going to go with the child shelters. 
We had a look at this before, and it could lead to medic apprentices and engineer apprentices, so it could be very useful uh, if, if played right, I suppose. So, new building, a child shelter, hope will rise, providing all children with a place in a child shelter gives a permanent hope bonus. So if we build two of these, then boom. And how much do they cost? Five steel. We got plenty. We got plenty of wood, plenty of steel. We just need the room to kind of keep them happy. Um, let's just close this for a second. Where would I build them? Now, I think they are about the length of two houses, I think. I'll see it in a moment anyway. So they're going to have to be built on this, like, outer rim here, probably. Put one there. I was going to put the hothouse here. It does look like this might be, you know, time for another steam hub. And I was saying that one fitting here would be good, because that's to and from the hunting huts. Might help, uh, help us out a bit. There is a steam hub up here, so who knows? Maybe we could just throw down some child shelters right here. Why not? Why not let them live next to where their parents are working in steel mills and steel factories, whatever they're called? it called steel works yeah maybe that's a good spot I think just because it's covered by heat I don't know what else I'd put out there and the child shelters are pretty warm and they'd be next to a steam hub yeah <laughs> just trying to convince myself of it I'm trying to think like the problem is the steam hub would have to be on all the time right I think I think the child shelters keep the children there the whole entire time they don't go back home they just live at the child shelters i th i think let me check on that let me see what does it say oh no only during work hours oh that's even better then that's perfect then so def definitely have it out here then definitely okay perfect so they'll just go and while while this is on work hour shift you know it goes on and off during the day That'll heat up the, the children while they're out here, and then they'll have to travel through the cold a little bit on this road to get back into the city, but then hopefully they'll be okay once they get there. You know, hopefully uh, just a little little journey won't hurt them too much, the little precious kids. Oh. Uh, so yeah, we'll sign that law. <laughs> Make people happy. Child shelters. Sign it! There we go. Oh, well, yeah. Tendency is only two little chevrons up now instead of three, so that's good. And then we can go people, child shelter. Oh, it's actually not nearly as big as I thought. Oh, that's even better. So we could slam it down there and slam it down there. What time is it now? It's free time. They could get building it. Yeah, sure, why not? New law has passed. I love that guy's voice. He's so cool. So we'll get that built and they'll be delighted. Let's, uh, this is on during work hours. So it'll come on in the morning for them to heat that up. And steel is still pretty good. We don't need to necessarily... Has this been done yet? No. There's still people gathering the, the last remnants of steel out there. So that's all good. No new law for a little while. And then we'll probably start building our order buildings and start watching over the people. As it said, I think watchtowers raise the uh, hope of people. That's a bit weird, actually. But a watchtower watching over people will raise the hope of people. I think the watchtowers are roughly the size of one house, I think might be even smaller. There might be a chance that it sits on the road. Although I think that's like a spotlight or something because there's more in that direction. Anyway, we'll see when we get to it. The Londoners are a group of people who are so frightened by the situation that they want to go back to London in a, if, uh, in a misguided belief that it's the only way to survive. People will join the Londoners when the hope level is low and leave them when it's high. Uh, the Londoners will challenge your rule, provoking conflicts and urging others to leave the city. Ooh. The intensity of conflict depends on the general condition of the society. We live in a society. All right, so it's nothing to do with discontent. It's just hope. Those steel tips are great. Isn't this game great? You know, I have a question and it's pretty much just answered almost all the time. The only thing I didn't know about was, and I still always am a bit concerned about, is the people that leave to go on hunts. But whatever, that's a small thing in comparison. And we're just about to get... So let's see, actually, does this number... Do we get a bunch of sick people right now? I hope I don't freeze to death on duty. So do I. All right, it's getting colder. It's getting colder with each day, says Reuben Payne. Benjamin Haywood. I missed what someone else said there. I think they were commenting on the child shelter law. Um, okay, it doesn't look like people got sick yet, but they are returning. So we'll see as they come in what happens. But food should be going up now, so let's assign some people to work the cookhouse. And it's work time in a, just a few seconds. There we go. Yeah, we're getting some sick people. Right now, not too many, so that's all good. That's very good, in fact. 
Again though, see, it was only negative 30 degrees when they went out, so that might be why. Now it's negative 40 again, so it might be worse. We'll see. We'll see. Keep an eye on it anyway. Uh, so what else now? So the cookhouse is doing its thing. The child shelters are being built. Uh, the coal, coal is a bit of a concern. We are producing a decent amount of coal. Although the houses out here are pretty... This place, these places are kind of chilly now, though. At negative 40. Which I'm surprised by. Even with the, um, I guess, the steam hub now. Places are chilly. But, if you kick this into overdrive... Then everything becomes livable. Because it overdrives the steam hubs as well. But we can't use that for too long. But we might as well have it on. I mean, you might as well bring it up and then lower it down. The temperature's not going to drop for like four days. It's not going to rise for four days either though. So we'll just have to compensate and cope and deal with this. We'll keep everyone livable for now. The overdrive doesn't cost anything extra. So we'll just keep that on livable for a while. And the uh, hunters are coming back in. Theo Mistien. Joel Gilbert. Frank Franklin. We saw him before. Clarence Hart, Eleanor Swan. Don't recognize those people. Edward Longton, Lord Neocon. Lord Neocon, I recognize him. Neocon. All right. Looking good, looking good. We'll just keep going for a little while longer because we're getting close to the end of this episode. Children cared for. The child shelter is ready and the children are safe inside. People can work without worrying that something will happen to their kids. Hope rises. Oh, are you kidding me? That was a tiny amount of hope. Every child has a place in a child shelter. Permanent modifier of hope. Good. Still tendency two. It's not nearly as good as I hoped. We'll have to... D oh man, they are boiling hot in here. They are a loving life. I don't have to put any heaters on for them or anything. So that's perfect. So who do we have in here? We've got all the kids. I have to rename some of these kids that haven't been given names yet. Some of the new ones that arrived. But there we have N Broadsword Belisarius. His name is actually spelled wrong. Let me fix that. extra A in there. I think that's right. I'll have to check it up afterwards. Sorry if I got it wrong. That's our Spear Manii, I Am Play, Remedy, Letherington, Oxert, Commodore, Meldictus, Napoleonitis, Oxert, Randolfsky. There he is. B. Randolfsky, Bushberry. He's been uh, commenting on Patreon looking for himself. Shocking Twist, Gaius, and then someone unnamed yet. Helion. Bunch of kids in this one. Kaz, AB, Neatomi, Bob, Mikhail, Mikhail, Double A, all the kids. So that's 26 kids looked after. We can afford to have four more kids in those child shelters. There's room for four more, I should say. And then perhaps we can progress the Book of Laws then to have medic apprentices. <clears throat> Education is key to our future. Let's teach our children medicine so they can help with the sick. Or engineer apprentices. Education is key to our future. Let's teach our children engineering so they can help with new designs. So yeah, I guess it'll depend on whether we're short on m medics or... We need more engineering later on. We'll have to decide on that later. Five hours before we reach um, the springs and 20 hours before we reach the American camp. Still more people uh, joining the Londoners. We'll have to try and actually fulfill promises now. <laughs> um, and the food is being processed, but only slightly. There's only one person actually working in here. Matilda. But everything else is looking pretty good. Everything else is looking pretty good. We don't need to build any extra homes until we know if more people are arriving. I mean, eventually more people probably will arrive, right? I bet Americans will probably arrive, cause problems. They'll be like, oh, we want our guns and all that. Uh, okay, a note of thanks. We just wanted to thank you. Back in London, it was only the wealthy that didn't have to send their kids to work. In this new world you're creating, we can see things will be different. It was the right thing to do. Hey, there we go, that's good. Yes, tiny little bit of hope. Yes, Tennessee's only one now. Great. It only takes one death, though, to pretty much obliterate your hope. <laughs> so, uh, just keep, stay on top of that for now. Uh, we're almost done with the hothouse. Which is what we're gonna build next. Yep. Hothouse researched. I'm almost starting to question if whether we even need it, but... I think it'll be good for the future. All right, let's build it. I, I think there is the right place. Let's have a look though. It has a base heating level of just one. So it needs to be next to a steam hub. Like it needs it. Or it needs to be like in the city. 
essentially. But it's a two lane, it's a two range building. So no matter what, it would need like uh, the generator to be on two range to ever be used. If we have it here, it's going to be heated no matter what. So we'll, we'll pop it down here, I think. Yeah. I wonder does it get count? Does it count if it's there? There's no point doing that though, is there? Oh, it, oh, that's nice UI. It actually lights up the Steam Hub to let me know, in range, not in range. So that would be perfect because then we could actually squeeze a house or something in there, but it won't work. So we'll just we'll just slam it down. There we go. So that's gonna then take one of our Steam cores, and uh, let's assign ourselves our, ne our next technology: bunk houses. Which would make sense, that can lower, yeah, I said that before. Bunk houses, and then we can lower our heating level. Our generator range, because it's on two right now, which is a little mental. If we get bunk houses, then uh, all the steel can be put to good use. In fact, let's prepare that steel in advance if we can. How much do we need? We need ten steel per house. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, that we'd need to, twelve, actually... Oh, no, that one's heated, so 11. So we need at least 100 steel banked so that we could build bunkhouse, bunk houses, upgrade all of these houses to bunk houses. And how much wood? Because that would also need to be banked to 20. So we'd need 200-ish. So that's interesting. Got to have that ready ahead of time. Okay. Hmm. How many workers do we have right now? Well, we might as well, while well, we have the free hands, put some people then on steel. So we've 10 free engineers. Put some people on on the uh, sawmill. Turn those buildings on. So what's this? Uh, we've used our first steam core. Steam cores are a necessary component in advanced technology. We can't manufacture steam cores in the city, so let's hope that our scouts find them during their expeditions. So we'll just get to this final expedition, and then we'll probably wrap it up. Only 10 people sick. This is excelente. So let's take everyone off that. You don't need to be in there. That's all good. So yeah, let's decommission some of these buildings. Sorry, not decommission them. Just turn them off for now. If they've got no patience. The problem is the patients are kind of split between a lot of these buildings. Oh, Haxo's wife is unwell. Um, let's see. This one. So there's two in that. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was meant to click these ones. They have no one in them. So yeah, let's turn that off. Turn that one off. So that's going to free up some of the workers. There we go. They can just stay at home or do something else. You know, if we need them to work out here, for instance. Uh, steel wreckage is finally being depleted out there. Gathering post depleted. Hot house research is done. So this then, I don't think we'll ever need a gathering post out here again. So you can dismantle that building. Don't think so anyway, because it's just going to be a sawmill out here. And that frees up 10 more workers for us. So things are going very nice. Scouts have reached the freshwater springs. Let's find out what happens. Several pools are kept from freezing by a hot spring deep underground. Patches of hardy lichens cling to, a bear, to the bare rock at their edges. It looks like a good place for a hideout. And there's some survivors here. Degenerated, but alive. Near the freshwater spring, springs, we met some refugees from Winterhome. They're a sorry sight seem to be completely unmoved by the fate of their city. Asked what had, sorry, asked what kept them from starving, they look away, then mumble something about eating, eating lichens. I actually don't know what li lichens, lichens are. I have to look that up. Sorry, <laughs> my vocabulary is limited. I'm assuming that they kind of looked away and looked like that, looked a little weird because they were eating each other as we found out at Winterhome. So that discovered two more sites for us, Frozen Grove and Snowcliff. We're gonna escort these guys back. So what is it? It's 22 workers and seven kids. Ah, damn, seven kids. That means that that's not that's more than we can have within our child's shelters. We can always just build another one. We have room to build more, at least. So yeah, we'll. Uh, it's tempted to send them back on their own, so we could just keep going. But we have some steam cores. I think I think you know we've risked it enough. Let's just go back with them. Um, we'll send another party out or something in, in their stead. Oh, wow. Yeah, look, we're after finding Frozen Grove, Snow Cliff, and then we have Coal Mine. So next group, we're going to send another group out now, I think, and go straight to, like, the Coal Mine, Snow Cliff, and Frozen Grove. I think that's the way to do it. So let's grab a, a group here. 
Oh, we can only have two at a time. Oh, right. I thought we unlocked the tech just to get as many as we want. I think you need even more tech to get more... Lighter scout sleds. I wonder what that does. Probably quicker scouting, I would imagine. And then outposts. Additional scouts. There it is. Yeah. And what is this? This is actually lit up right now. Oh, it's just because it's what we're researching. And what do we need for this? 75 wood and 25 steel. Okay. Coal is doing great, by the way, which is really good to see. Um, wood and steel are now starting to kind of deplete a bit. So we started our steel production again, and we started our wood production again. So we can start saving that up for our bunkhouses, because we're going to just obliterate it when we start upgrading those bunkhouses. Um, but that's going to be it for today, guys. Um, this has gone extremely well. <laughs> So, again, we met all of our goals. We processed the sick. There's only 10 remaining. We can even now turn off a lot of the sick buildings and save them for later. And eventually, if we get a better infirmary or something, we can maybe just dismantle these buildings and reorganize this part of the city. Uh, we did obviously experience the fall of Winterhome, and the Londoners now are our main concern. Luckily, we've lowered the tendency to just a handful of people may join them. But obviously, even we don't want 19 people to leave. We don't want anyone to leave. And events and things are probably going to happen where they're going to try and fight us and cause steal from us and do a bunch of things. They're probably going to steal from us to try and go to London with our stuff. It's just going to cause problems. Um, so hope is going to be a big battle for us to raise in future. And now that we're coming back with seven kids, we're going to have to build another child shelter to keep these guys happy. Because it's six out of 15. And... If Oh, wait, maybe not then. We have 26, though. That's more than... T that's not a... Yeah, I don't know. That's not counting everyone just yet. Surely more are going to show up. I would imagine. Anyway, so we'll probably have to build another one. Because, yeah, we've got 7 coming in. Like, 7 plus 26, like, brings us over 30, right? And we can only have 30 in these two buildings. But this building says 6 out of 15 and 15 out of 15. So I don't know why it doesn't show everyone yet in this one. They're all going to the shelter. Where is it, AB, actually? Let's check him out. AB. There he is. Cute as a button. Alright, um, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.